Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, well, do you know what? I guess actually at this point it's more like you welcoming me back. I feel like yet again my YouTube hiatus has been a bit more common than my YouTube presence, but it's just time. It's all down to time. I would love nothing more than to be making as many videos for you as what I was able to do during university, but that simply just isn't the case. I feel like over the last few years my mind has been so busy thinking of work that I sometimes don't even have an idea for the content that I want to create and then when it gets to the point that I do actually have an idea, finding the time to film it and then edit it just doesn't seem to happen and that's something that's actually happened trying to film this video here as well. I have known for quite some time now that I've wanted to do a video like this. I've wanted to sit down and talk through the planning process because going into teaching from university, planning is something that is so difficult and it seems very daunting at the time and I'm not gonna lie sometimes it does seem like a very daunting task still but I knew it was a video that I absolutely wanted to film just talking you through the planning process so that's what we're gonna do today I am going to talk you through how I go about planning for a term of teaching now at the moment we are actually in the middle of a term we're at the February half term holiday right now which is why I'm sitting down to film this video but the clips that I'm going to insert throughout this video were filmed um, over the Christmas holidays as I was planning for term three. Now I would have loved to have sat down and filmed this talking section as well as I was doing it but I just didn't get round to it so now I'm going to talk you through the process and I'm going to overlay some clips as I go of me planning for term three which is the term that we're currently in just now. So before we dive any further into this video, I do just want to make a quick disclaimer and say that every council in Scotland, every school does their planning totally differently. So what I'm saying at the moment is coming from my experience of planning at my current school. The school that I was at last year doing my probation year operated in a completely different way as well. And none of those ways are right or wrong, it's just what works best for the school. So you really need to get to know the planning process at your school as well, which is also another reason that I haven't filmed this video until now. When I moved to the school I'm currently at in August, obviously I was learning a whole new method of planning there. And when I began planning for term two, I was still seeking out bits of assistance here and there from other members of staff and it's only really when I've got to planning for term three that I feel as though I am fully capable of planning independently. And a similar thing happened as well in my probation year. Terms one and two I needed so much assistance to plan and term three I started to get into the rhythm of it a little bit more by myself. So. There's your disclaimer, please do not take what I am saying as the gospel here because it is totally different. Obviously I'm just speaking from my own experience and it is a relatively short one, but here we go. I'm going to slide slightly over this side, oh I nearly knocked my table over. You know how I like to insert a little diagram every now and then, so this can be the diagram space. Um, and let's get started. I feel as though the best place to start when talking about planning is planning overall. Because when you're at university, I feel as though you get a lot of input about lesson plans, specifically like plans for a lesson. And when I was at uni, there was a lot of talk about the eight step lesson plan and how it had to be laid out in a certain format. Whenever you went on a placement, you had to do specific lesson plans for each individual lesson that you were going to teach. When you get to the point of doing your probation year and then moving past that point, the lesson plan no longer exists. It would be entirely unrealistic to expect a teacher to plan every single lesson in that amount of depth. It just would not happen. There would not be enough hours in a day. So when it comes to teaching your own class, planning in terms of short term planning is done day to day. Every teacher will have a planning folder and in that folder there will be a lesson plan for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And within that lesson plan, it breaks down each individual lessons into learning intentions and perhaps success criteria if they're not getting co-created on the day. It is in those daily lesson plans that you will talk through any resources that you need, any videos, the key teaching points throughout the lesson. And that will normally be like a two-sided sheet of paper. Then you go from your short term planning to your more medium term planning. And for me, medium term planning looks like your termly plan. 
It is this middle level that we are going to be focusing on today because I'm going to talk you through my planning for term three. But when you go from the medium term planning to long term planning, that's more looking at your yearly overview. And that's sort of focusing on any specific areas of the curriculum that you're going to focus on in a certain term. For example, at both of the schools I've been at, they both choose to do relationships, sexual health and parenthood in term four. So that's something that would be included in your long term plan and your yearly plan from the start because you know that that's something that's going to be done at that time. Similarly, things like Scots language, Scots dancing, anything Scottish studies is normally done in term three because of Burns Night in January. Then, say if you're in primary one, things like the nativity will obviously be happening every December, so that would already be in your long-term planning. But for now, let's dig in to the medium-term planning. We are going to look at how I, in particular, plan for a term of teaching. Now, as I'm going through this, I'm going to be speaking most specifically about planning for one particular class. If you are not aware of my situation, this year I don't have my own class and I'm working across multiple different levels in the school. In term three, for example, my Mondays are spent in primary seven, my Tuesdays are spent in primary six, five, my Wednesdays are spent in primary five or primary five, four, my Thursdays are split across primary seven and primary six, five, and my Fridays are spent in primary one. So those are a range of different stages I am planning for, and each of those different stages and different classes needs its own planning done as well. And because of that, because I don't have my own class to focus on, my first step when planning is to go and talk to the class teacher. Because although I'm in that class for one day a week or one day every two weeks, the class teacher is ultimately in control of what happens in the class. So before the end of the previous term, I will go and speak to this teacher, we'll sit down and have a talk over the things I focused on the term before, and if they have any preferences about what I'm going to teach going forward, we'll sort of hash that out and get a rough plan of what I'm going to be doing. So for most classes, that will look like an area of literacy that I take to cover when I'm in the class, an area of numeracy and I'm normally focusing on beyond number purely because it's a bit easier when I'm not there the whole time and then we'll look at two other areas of the curriculum to focus on. Now is also a good time to mention that a lot of the clips I'm going to be overlaying as I'm talking were from my planning of primary 6-5. Um, in that class I was planning for things like French and RME, PE, so that's the sort of things that you'll see overlaid throughout this video. So I've decided what subjects I'm going to be covering with each class and I've got a brief overview of the area within that subject that I'm going to cover. My next step when I'm planning it is then to go onto the school's shared area, which is just their database for storing lots of different documents and I will have a look up over the previous planning and evaluations that have been done. Now, if I've been with that class previously, I will have a look at my own evaluations that I did at the end of the previous term. I will see what I managed to complete. I will see if there's anything that hasn't been completed that needs to roll over onto term three. And I will just get a general feel of how I think the class did and how my teaching suited them that term. If it is a class I haven't been in previously, this step is even more important because I need to have a look at what the teacher has done with them before so that anything's not being replicated and I need to have a read over their evaluations as well to see the best steps going forward. This was the case when I was planning for primary 6-5 this term because before then I hadn't actually been in that class and I was taking over from another teacher so I had to look back at things like French and RME and see what areas of the curriculum she had already covered and what areas I was going to take going forward. After I've spoken to the class teacher and I've had a look at previous evaluations and planning, I've then got a good picture of what the children already know and then it's time to get started with where we're going to go from there. And it's at this point that I feel the daunting bit comes because that's when you need to begin looking at the E's and O's, you need to look at the benchmarks, you need to look at various different progressions and frameworks and sort of formulate a rough idea of a block of teaching and what it's going to look like. I feel like I've not stopped talking. Also, the sun is starting to go down, so the lighting in this video is about to go mad, but we're just gonna deal with it. We're gonna live with it. So, the planning documents. Let's have a little chat about them before I go any further. At the top, 
In my head, I see this as a triangle, so this is how I'm going to explain it to you. And at the top of the triangle, we have the government documents, the curriculum for excellence, experiences and outcomes, and the benchmarks. These are the things that the government want children to either achieve or experience throughout their education. And these will go from early level, which is nursery age, all the way out of primary school and into secondary. As a teacher, they give you a good understanding of the basics that need covered, but they're not very detailed at all. And in order to get that detail, you then have a move down the triangle to your council documents. Glasgow City Council, which is where I am working at the moment, do a pretty good job of getting different frameworks and progressions made up which take the E's and O's and the benchmarks and they make them a bit more manageable. You get to see what that means for a child at each specific stage. Through Glasgow City Council, we have access to some great frameworks. We've got the Glasgow Counts framework, which is based off of the numeracy and mathematics outcomes. We've got the Literacy for All, which is quite self-explanatory. And there's also some great frameworks as well for things like the expressive arts and STEM subjects as well. And the thing that I really love about these documents is not only do they make the E's and O's and the benchmarks seem a little bit more user friendly, but each of these frameworks come up with back pages and on these back pages you have access to things like different resources that you could use for each subject. They have video links or good websites that you might want the children to engage with. And they also break down your benchmarks a little bit more so that you can see what the child should have done the year previous and what they should be able to do by the end of the year because the experiences and outcomes are a bit vague and I feel like the framework gives you a more, I don't know, I guess it's just a more measurable goal to work towards if that makes any sense. I am roasting. Okay, now moving on to the bottom of my imaginary triangle, we have the different documents and progressions and frameworks that are produced by the school. Now, obviously these will all differ entirely depending on where you are working, but obviously different schools have different priorities. They have different subjects or areas of subjects that they want covered at certain times, and that is all found within your school's own documentation. For example, at my school we have an RME planner which looks at the different experiences and outcomes that they want covered at different year groups and the assessment that can be done alongside it. Um, we also have a literacy overview which covers things like grammar concepts which should be taught at which stage, things like sounds that should be covered, anything like that. So not only do you need to be sure that you are meeting the requirements of the Scottish Government, you also need to make sure that what you are teaching is in line with the council that you're working for and of course the school that you're teaching in. So I'm looking at my planners, I am gathering a much better idea of what it is that I'm going to be teaching in the term to come. At the school I am currently teaching in, when we are looking at our planners, we are asked to highlight them and we have a highlighting code depending on the term that you're going to teach them in. And this is just so that you can see a clear progression. And especially with me, because I am going in and teaching in another teacher's classroom, it makes it easy to see that we're not covering the same things at the same time. So after you've explored the E's and O's and you've had a look at the planners and the back pages and the benchmarks to be covered at each stage, you will have a much better idea of the content that you need to teach and also how you want to assess each of those curricular areas. At my school, when we are planning, we fill out a planned assessment and evaluation grid. And on that grid, we as teachers choose around, say, five different ways that we are going to assess the child's learning within that curricular area. Now, the way that we make sure that our assessment is going to be measurable is by relating it to something that is either made, said, done or written. So on our planned assessment and evaluation grids, we have make, say, do, write, and any of the assessments that we come up with must allow the child to demonstrate their learning through either making something, saying something, doing something, or writing something. And obviously, depending on the subject area that you're teaching, the assessment will differ slightly. But I feel as though planning in this way as a teacher, it gives you an end point. Now, this method of planning was not used at my previous school, at my previous school, it was a lot more based around learning intentions rather than the outcome. And I feel as though planning in the way that I do now and having a very measurable outcome 
it makes your job as a teacher a little bit easier because you know what you're working towards and you can clearly see if a child has made, done, said or written that thing that you asked them to do. I feel as though planning in this way is something that I'll definitely take from this school. I feel as though planning this year has been a lot more simple but also more meaningful to me as a teacher than what it was last year and as I go forward it's definitely something that I'm going to keep in mind. So we've gone through each of those steps and at this point the medium term planning is more or less complete. For me a complete medium term plan will look like roughly two sides of A4 for each class that I teach in and on my planned assessment and evaluation sheet I will have a breakdown of the subject areas that I'm going to be teaching that class. So for example, for Primary 6-5 it is literacy with our focus being non-fiction reading and writing. I have numeracy where our focus is patterns and relationships as well as impact on the world. I then have French and our focus for this term is food and drink. I have RME where we are going to be focusing on Bible studies and Bible stories and I also have PE where we're going to be focusing on volleyball and science where we are going to be focusing on the senses and sensory organs. That was actually quite difficult to remember off the top of my head. With these finished planned assessment and evaluation grids I will then upload them onto the school's shared area and that means that the class teacher can go in and have a look and see if they agree with what I've written and at some point throughout the term the head teacher or the senior leadership will go in and read over it and just make sure that everyone's planning is up to scratch. And then as soon as the planning's done you celebrate. Well you celebrate until you have to sit down and then plan for the week ahead. <laughs> so there we have it. I hope that this video made sense. As always, I feel like when I sit down to do videos like this, I just ramble. I try and make notes, I try to make it as clear as I can, but I do go off on a tangent and it is quite tricky to explain when you're not in that situation. But in saying that, I hope it was helpful. This is a video that I have wanted to film for a while purely because when I started my probation year, the thought of planning for a whole term of teaching was so daunting. Like I'd gone from planning just for like a few lessons in a week to having to plan for a term of teaching and it is a lot of work, it's big and it's scary, but it's absolutely manageable. And what I have found in the last two years is that there is always going to be someone to help you. So I'm going to leave it here. I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. As always, if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. I cannot promise quality regular content, but you want to be here when it happens, don't you? Anyway, I'm going to shoot off. I really hope that it isn't as long until I post another video, but your guess is as good as mine at this point. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will, fingers crossed, see you again very soon. Bye!